My name is Yusuf Latif. I am an artist. I employ all types of uh, tools and materials. And one of those tools are, um, or materials, are people. And it's called performance art. And for in advance, thank you for participating today. <laughs> so what I need everyone to do is all throughout your row, if, you're, if you have some space, maybe sit next to that person, I want you to hold that person's hand. We're going to do an experiment. I'll give you a few minutes. Let's make sure we're all connected. This isn't hands across America, this is just hands across TEDx. All right, now, I want you to close your eyes. Trust me, I'm an artist. <laughs> I want you to close your eyes, and I'm going to tell you something, and I'm going to say that I don't have claim to you. You don't have a claim to me. We do not have a claim to this land. We don't have a claim to this country, this state, these borders. When we're gone, a tree will grow right where you stand today. Our eyes may fail us. Our hearing may fail us. Our bodies will fail us one day. So what's the most important thing? What's the reality? The reality is you are not your body. You are potential. You are potential. Your potential. Now, I want you to open your eyes but still hold hands. And on the count of three, you're going to raise your hands and give a big hooray. OK? One, two, three. Three. Hooray! I almost teared up right there. My daughter, she's four, she starts our, we do our prayer at dinner time, and that's her prayer. She counts and we say hooray. <laughs> that was the biggest hooray I've ever seen. So, My name used to be Jeremy. I'm an artist. <laughs> My name used to be Jeremy. And in 99, I, I, I converted to Islam. And in that conversion process, I did something crazy, actually. Uh, and I want to make a public apology to my parents for making them worry so much. I dropped out of school. My senior year of college. I literally had enough credits to graduate. But the drive was so strong that I had to make that leap, and it was a leap of faith. That, that leap was caused by two things. One, the principles and the values that I learned growing up in a church. And then two, the principles and the rules that I learned while I was in art school. You see, in Islam, we always start a talk with an affirmation, with a point. And for us, we say, there is no God but God. And we also say that the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, is his messenger and servant. 
And we also study and we learn that there are things that the prophet said. And one thing that he said, follow me, he said that paradise is at the foot of the mother. Paradise is at the foot of the mother. Now remember I said we're potential. Now what's at the foot of the mother? What's there at the foot? Who's there? Who is that that's there? That was us. That was us. We were sitting there. That's that child. That was us being nurtured. We are the potential. And we're shifting and moving and looking at things and playing with the material world. And she's putting things in front of us. She's, you know, first we put things in our mouths and we tear things down. We tear things apart. And then what do we do next? We start putting things together. We start stacking things. Then what do we do? We start naming things and putting things in their proper places. Then what do we do? We start the process all over again. As we get older, we reach different plateaus. So we're constantly playing with this material world. And what I realized as being an artist, art has almost little or nothing to do with a paintbrush. It has nothing to do with clay. It's the potter, when she sits down at the wheel and she slams that clay on that wheel, and the first thing you have to learn how to do is center that clay, or it's just going to be wobbly. You're not going to be able to pull it up correctly. The first thing you have to do as an artist when you take that drawing class is how to draw a straight line how to connect two lines together, or maybe connect four lines together to make a square, or maybe connect, I don't know, what's that, eight, five, six, I don't know, to make a cube. <laughs> <laughs> so we're constantly building on this information. But the job of the artist is to remind us that we are not, our bodies, we're not just in this material experience as human beings, but we are spiritual people, we're spiritual beings. And by working and using the material world, we enhance our spiritual lives. Now, remember, we are a part of this material world too. And not only that, we are also manipulating the material world. But who's the real you? If I sit across from you, I don't see you. I see your body. I see the eyes and the nose and the face, but who is that animating that body? Who is that that's making, that, making you get up in the morning and go through your routine? As you play with material, as you get older, you start to develop a logic. Now I'm going to share with you the four basic principles for visual art. But I'm not just sharing with you the four basic principles of visual art. I'm sharing with you some, the four basic principles of navigating, and this is the job of the artist, of navigating and negotiating between the material and the spiritual world. The line. The line. You start out with your line. You have to draw a shape. Very basic. That's your line of logic. That's that's your analytical self, right? You're trying to follow one course or you're trying to reach a destination through uh, the means of reasoning or thinking it through, okay? So the line represents logic. So the four basic principles are line, value, form, and texture. Who's taken an art class before in grade school? Anybody? Everybody should raise your hand. I know everybody had that teacher. You glued paper together. You drew a little snowman. And they always put art in the margins. They say, you know, art's not important. Or they'll take art out of school completely. Or they'll hire an art teacher, give her a Give her, he, he, uh, her they, uh, a cart of materials, and they got to service 
hundreds of kids. <laughs> so I'm sharing with you the importance of, of art and that we've been lied to. Art is not necessarily what we think it is. So line, you're drawing your line. That's your line of logic. I'm drawing a line right now between the images that you're looking at and what I'm saying. I'm letting it intuitively link up with the words that I'm saying. You're looking at the image and then thinking about what was just said. So your line of logic. Then your value. How do you know that that's a, that's a cube? If light hits it, you got a shaded side of that cube, another shaded side of that cube. And because, it, it's, because it's casting a shadow, I know where it is in proximity to the room. So it's, you have to know your value, OK? It's not shading. It's your true value. It's who you are. And that's how you realize and relate to the, to the material world or to other people, is understanding your value. You have, we have to understand our value as people. Third is form. Your form is created by your line of logic, the way you think, your value, the way you relate to the world, and the form is how you put those two things into action. Now you're looking for your purpose. You were crawling, now you're standing, now you're running. And your purpose could be, I'm looking for my purpose. <laughs> it's just the idea of putting your way, the way that you think, in relationship to the, how you relate with the material world, and then you, you use that information and you act on it. Your, what your purpose is flows right into texture. Now you're making judgments. Now you're judging the world. Now you're saying, this is this. You're stacking things. You're, you're naming things. That's the, that's the texture. Something is smooth. Something is rough. Something has a brash um, character. And that's how people see us and relate to us. But these two things are always waffling back and forth. It's a material experience, but that material is the thing that depreciates. The thing that appreciates is the spiritual. The one thing about artwork that's different than a vehicle, so if you buy a vehicle and you drive it off the lot, it, that second it depreciates. You cannot sell it back for the same price you bought it for. Artwork can sell for millions of dollars. And you know what? No one will tell you how much they paid for it because they want to keep that faith. They want to keep that unseen component, right? The minute you know what the value is, the minute you can put the judgment on it. So that's the importance of art. Art is not just playing with material. You're not just sitting down and drawing a picture. You're drawing yourself. You're drawing your reality. You're moving in a dimension. That's what drawing is. You draw from a well. You draw from an experience. You draw from a relationship or a conversation. You're taking one thing in one dimension and putting it into another. But if you don't look at it correctly, once you switch it over to the other dimension, it's off. I'll give you an example. Racism. <laughs> Racism is steeped in materialism. It's, it's all related in, in the material body. It's saying that I have right to a land based on my skin color, based on this idea of purity, race purity, right? But what happens when we all turn to dust? Mm -hmm. We shift our bones and our ash and little co color components, you know? Value scale, you know? So that it's faulty, that's faulty logic. It's a logic. Trust me, I, you can argue with someone that believes that, and you will not win. They will believe it to the grave, and that's okay. 
I should trust that person. Thank you for putting that flag on the back of your truck. You know, at least I, I know, I know where you stand at. We can get a cup of coffee if you want, man. Let's talk it over. So don't check out. Check into the reality of what's happening. You are moving in two dimensions all the time. You're going back and forth, material, spiritual, material, spiritual. The spiritual is scary. It's, it's thing, the thing that we don't talk about. We go to church, we go to our mosque, we go to our temple, and we're spiritual. But then we leave and we go to our respective homes or jobs, and we cease to think like that. But understand that it's happening constantly. It's happening all the time. When I left school, I was so deep in the spiritual. I was so deep. I wanted, you know, I was so neophytic. I was like, ah, I was like super Muslim. <laughs> and then I started to realize, as I, I was working construction jobs, I was doing all kinds of things. And I started to realize that, you know, I have a gift. I'm seeing something here. I need to reach back. I need to go back and grab my gift. So um, I was given an opportunity to do a mural when uh, neo-Nazis came to... Uh, Toledo, and there was an uprising, and some of you may remember that. We made national news. We always make national news when those things happen. Um, so a woman reached out to me. Her name is Lorna Gonzalez. She reached out to me. She said, hey, Yusuf, can you? I want you to work with this community and talk to the kids of Woodward High School and, and relate their feelings and how they feel into a visual idea. I want you to make a mural. I said, sure. And that was the start of it. So I started making artwork, started making murals, and I started to become community engaged. And then I started to realize, you know, this is not about my paintbrush. This is about me considering the moment and acknowledging that I'm more than just my ideas. I'm, I'm, I'm more than... than this, this idea of the artist, I am and have the ability to communicate to others in a way that allows people to acknowledge for themselves their skill and their talent. So we're all artists. Wherever you go, whatever you do, do it artistically. Do it the best. If you do something at its greatest potential, you're, you've placed it in the realm of art. If I need a surgery tomorrow, I want a surgeon that is, has made an art form out of what they do, OK? <laughs> so let's return the practice of art back to its rightful place. Let's bring it back to the center of community. Let's invest in it properly. Let's give it its true importance. And all of you go out and get a sketchbook, get a, get a pencil, and start making your line. Thank you. <laughs>